years of my life. How you doing? You good? Ever feel like you're sitting a little too close to the telly? <laughs> I love you. You got the real thing here. You can just look straight at me. Nice to see you. And on this side. I love you guys. Thank you. So I brought up the youngest, which everybody says is the best. Being the youngest is the best, right? And it's fun. Yeah, okay. Let me hear from you if you're the youngest in your family. You hear that? Can you hear the crumbles? That's, that's the middle kids, just to be clear. But it's not the best. It's not. It's the worst because your whole life, everybody else is doing things you're not allowed to do. That's all you hear. Your whole don't worry, Hugh. It's okay. You'll get to do it next year. I'm like, next year? I'm seven. I'm not which in the face. What's wrong? So, oh, by the way, I am going to play the piano for you here tonight. No. Because clearly, I think three years of piano lessons at high school qualifies you for playing arenas all around the world. I'm so sorry to the lifelong professionals up here on the stage. Life is completely unfair. I mean, look, I have two spotlights, a grand piano, and there you are sitting in the dark. It's terrible. But hey, at least we get paid the same, pretty much. That's... <laughs> Not helping, you're not helping, it's a private moment. <laughs> so that is why, being the youngest, I will never forget the day of my first game of cricket when I was eight. Um, now, I played cricket, obviously, in the backyard, I watched cricket, but this was a real game of cricket with my team, my, my own team, my own cricket uniform, my own cricket gear, and it was the biggest day of my life up to that point. And I'll never forget it because I was alone that morning. Everyone was out playing sport, I mean, driven to sport, so I was told, be at the end of the driveway, another family is going to pick you up, they're going to take you to the game, the game starts at nine. So. I'm there at the end of the driveway, like 6.30, waiting. <laughs> and, and you know when you, you can just feel something's not quite right, but you don't want to admit it? I was just sitting there like, they're gonna pick me up, they're gonna pick me up. But I was waiting so long. I didn't even, to be honest, want to go inside and check on the time because, you know, what if I was right? And eventually I did have to go inside and I was right. It was already 9.30. I've been waiting for three hours. And I was freaking out. I thought I'd, maybe I'd made a mistake, right? I thought maybe it's 9.30 or maybe I was meant to be inside. Maybe the phone's been ringing this whole time and I, I just didn't know what to do. So I started running backwards and forwards from the phone inside the house out to the end of the driveway, backwards and forwards. Now it's 10 o'clock, now it's 10.30, now it's 11 o'clock. And by 11 o'clock I kind of gave up and I was so angry. I felt so powerless sitting out there at the end of the driveway, just waiting, waiting. Wait. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Woo. Have you ever Woo. felt in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? I was 
about as vulnerable as I'd ever been in my life. And I just wish more than anything I could go back to that eight-year-old version of myself at the end of the driveway and reassure me that everything's going to be okay, that yes, this feels terrible and there's a lot going on right now you don't understand, but this will not define you. In fact, what will define you is just how many people will be there to pick you up when you fall. Justin and Benj, who wrote all the music for The Greatest Showman. And it's from a musical called Dear Evan Hansen, if you haven't seen it. I love that musical. I've seen it three times. I love it. Um, I know a lot of young